Hello again. I'm so excited to have here with me the lovely Karen Michelson. For those of you that is, have registered, you'll be seeing her later today at our live CE. Um, this is a free CE that's being covered by our sponsors, and it's going to be a really great um, new topic that you don't hear a lot about, which is um, connecting the dots within your business. And um, Karen's going to talk a little bit about that. But um, Karen does have an amazing business that she's consulted, um, that she's um, developed, Care Consulting, and I Wear by Kay. So we wanted to have Karen on and talk a little bit about um, her background. And um, Karen, I understand that um, you've been in the industry for quite some time now. I have been actually. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Charlene. I have been in the industry. Uh, I always make the joke. I, uh, I've been in the industry for 42 years. I celebrated 40 years in 2020, which was not exactly a celebration for any business in the eye care industry. However, um, you know, when you think about 42 years, uh, you know, I've been called seasoned or uh, I don't know, maybe rotisserie, but I, I just it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Now, you grew up um, with somebody who was an amazing mentor for you, your father, and he had a very big role to play in the Midwest community, specifically in Minnesota. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that was like growing up and really just being born into the industry? Sure, sure. Yep. Uh, so my father, uh, Joe, uh, I started going to work with him when I was very young. And uh, he would take me for the day and I would st basically early on saw what he was doing and really just admired, you know, the fact that he could help people. Uh, fashion at the time, 42 years ago, I'm not even sure what that was, but I thought that was pretty cool. And he was doing technical things and just just so many different things. So I, I decided that I was going to enter into the optical industry and he told me no. And I said, yes. And I typically won because I was daddy's little girl. <laughs> and so uh, he said, if you're going to do this, you're going to do this right. The way, the only way that we can do it. And, you know, there really were no schools at that point. So we did here in Minnesota have a technical college that I went to a 10 month course. So that was doing it right back in uh, 42 years ago. And I was certified. If I look at my number, it's pretty low. In 1982, I was uh, 17 years old when I was certified and I've never let it lapse. So following my father uh, through the years from being a little girl up until, you know, my first job was really interesting because with Minnesota and most of the Midwest states are not certified states or not licensed states. So it's been a, a real battle. It was a real battle. Uh, and he worked tirelessly with uh, the Minnesota Optician Society, which he started, and then as well as the uh, Midwest Optical Conference, which took Minnesota, Iowa, and uh, South and North Dakota, and developed, <clears throat> excuse me, a, you know, a, a group uh, of opticians and we would do spring and fall conferences and we would have great speakers and vendors and and they're kind of dissipated and my dad you know the people that pioneered this my dad is really one of the last ones left he's 95 he stopped dispensing at 93 and not because he wanted to but uh yeah so my goal is really to bring that back to the midwest I'm one, but I know there's many that are, you know, willing to support because this industry is just, although it's changing, it's, uh, it's still really amazing. Well, that's very ambitious, but there's a great need there. And, you know, when you have passion, you know, I've only been in the industry, you know, 25 years and I have a great passion and my father didn't, um, you know, teach me everything I know about the optical industry, nor did I get to watch it. So I can only, and I have an intense love and passion and loyalty to this industry. So I can only imagine what it is for you <laughs> having committed double that amount of time and watching it growing up. Um, and I, I think it's something to be commended. So thank you for staying true to that. Cause I know firsthand, it's not always easy to, to do that. So tell me what it was like kind of before when there was more of an organized um, opticians association in, in Minnesota, because I think that that's where specifically we're talking about right now. And now, now that there's no, these resources aren't really state funded. That's the big difference, right? When you're organized versus um, not organized, that you don't really have that support and that 
kind of advocacy from the state. Would you say that's the main difference or do you want to talk a little bit about that? You know, yes, because here's here's what I see. You know, I don't know that much about the license states because I've never lived in one. I have done uh, education and speaking in licensed states and uh, the unlicensed states, it seems like there seems to be a little bit more hunger for that interaction because they don't have to do it. But the ones that are committed to keeping their their certification up, they really want to. So, yeah, our it, nothing was state funded for us ever. We were, uh, you know, it was all volunteer and we had, um, you know, the dues. We had dues every year and this is what they got. And then uh, with our events, of course, we charged an, an, entry, an entry fee for credits. And that's really how we kept kept it going. And then, uh, you know, I feel that it, the the national groups are, are great, but you get lost, you know, you feel lost. I'm a part of a couple groups myself. I'm very active in the Optical Women's Association and that probably gives me the best sense of what I felt back in the day, because I worked with my dad, you know, and with with this group of uh, people, you know, throughout all of the ranks. I started as a, you know, an administ uh, just helping administratively and ending up as president, and it just was really difficult to see it go. Uh, so, but it's, uh, you know, the the way it was back then, we weren't seeing free CE. We weren't having things all over social media. You know, the only way you could get what you needed to get was coming together. And I don't even, I really don't believe that people understood how it fed their soul and how it fed them personally versus just sitting in a room and getting a credit. Uh, yet, you know, uh, I think if you had conversations with people that have been in those situations that they would say, what credit? It was more the networking part of it. Well, you bring up a really good point. And, and you know, we did something unique for, for this particular event just because it was really important to us that we had as many Midwest eye care professionals seeing this and learning from the people in their local businesses and their community um, how, how they're supporting them. So we really wanted to go that extra step and not just go through email. We called people and we talked to them and um, we, we were getting some insight and feedback on... Um, the value that um, optical professionals mostly is who we were speaking with, the value they place in not just continuing education, but just staying really connected to your industry and the people in it. And I, I wish I, I wish I could say I heard more of a, um, more of an understanding of how important that of a role that plays. But I think if people just give themselves a little bit of time in their in their week or their year or whatever to just read about something new or go and experience something new or just attend even a small regional event or even a virtual event like this, it doesn't matter which one it is, it, it, you will realize what you're missing because that, you know, getting to speak to people that are outside of your normal circle, you hear all sorts of new things. You, you'll be shocked at what you don't know. <laughs> Seriously. I am every single day. And believe me, I talk to a lot of people. <laughs> I'm always learning something new and that's one of my favorite things about doing these events is it really keeps your finger on the pulse and today you need that you need as much support as you can get your hands on you know i'd like to hear your feedback there what is your take on that well absolutely charlene you know i think that you know i've been pushing the the boundaries of my circle in the last year year and a half because you know i've always said you have something i need to know and i have something you need to know and whether it's just useless information to <laughs> stand in line and talk to somebody um, or just really, um, it, you have to expand, you have to push, you know, and at 42 years, I don't need to be pushing, pushing anymore. I, I can, I can pull back. And one thing I always say is you don't dip, you don't drift towards something, you drift away. So at this part of my, this point in my career, with my last chapter, my last set of dots, I guess we'll say, you know, I could be drifting away and just kind of existing, and that's not what I I want to do. And you know, I'm hoping that I can bring, uh, you know, that motivation and that definitiveness of what you know, people are looking at, what am I, what am I doing in this industry? You know, how can I continue on in this industry with what's happening? And we see what's happening all around us. So, you know, I, 
I always just say, you know, if you know the starfish story, helping one starfish at a time is what's important. And if I can get across to one person, um, uh, you know, just to help them to the next level or get to the point where, you know, they don't want to leave the industry. Um, so, you know, really that's my goal, but yes, I really believe people, uh, are, they need to push and we're going to see that tonight. And, you know, we're, we're seeing that with all of our vendors today that, you know, I represent in the Midwest that they're pushing the envelope, you know, they're different things. They're different revenue streams or they're, they're fun. They're, it's the only reason I want to represent those is because, and that's what the I wear by K is, is I will wear them. I believe in them. I think I, I love the, you know, innovative uh, and the newness of some of these products. So, and I've been around, uh, you know, corporate for a long time and involved with a lot of companies. So it's almost like going backwards a bit, um, you know, back in time to what it used to be. So maybe that's why I'm so attached to it and so passionate, passionate about it. And I really think there's, there's people, there's a lot of people that are wanting that. So. Now I've had the privilege of seeing your, your course lineup of, you know, it's a 12 part series of, mm -hmm. of CE that you're doing. And today, is this the first or do you have them in order chronologically? Is, does it? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> so one of the things that fueled the courses was, you know, uh, I've always, uh, when I've spoke, when I have spoken in the past, I always had motivational courses on my own or, or something that came from something that happened to me, whether it was a sale, sales experience that I was able to turn into a learning, okay? And that I could share because I knew it was repeatable and I knew if people, if they followed it, they could do it. So this particular one, Connecting the Dots, was originally a keynote address at the Optical um, Opticians Association of America. I was asked to speak by the OWA. And it was really kind of funny how it came up. They asked me, you know, to speak. I said, sure. I've never done, done a keynote before. How hard can that be? Hmm. Well, uh, they called me one night and asked for a title because they needed to start advertising. And I said, oh, a title? You need a title? So what I did was my favorite candy is uh, is dots, you know, the, the dot candies. And there was a box sitting in front of me and I said, connecting the dots. They wanted me to talk about my longevity in the industry and the passion. And every time this woman you know, would see me, she's like, Karen, it just seems like you just are so in love with the industry. And I said, yes, I really am. It's, it's, it just is who I am and what I love to do. So uh, that's how it was born. And then that course has taken on a number of different meanings. Like, you know, personally, what are, what is connecting the dots? You know, you have different flavors. What, what are your favorite flavors or what are your favorite things in life? And what are the things you don't like, which are the yellow dots for me? But what I did with the course for tonight, which is, I guess, a flagship for me. And that's where, you know, the foundation of my business is you have to connect the dots to get to the next step. Right. And to me, that's just an easy analogy to picture. So tonight it's really about looking at you know, your business, where you're at today, where you need to be tomorrow. And I'm not talking in two months. I'm talking tomorrow when you wake up. What do you need to be thinking about? Uh, looking at the experience that your patients or clients are uh, experiencing now and then bringing the new things that people are just scratching the surface of, you know, like what we're talking about today. And then the other 11 courses are really based on uh, just sales, motivation, you know, increasing revenue. It, it's all about patient experience for everything I do is about the end user. Okay. And so those 12 chapters became the, the foundation for, uh, the book I'm writing that should launch in the spring. It's taken a couple of turns. If you've never read, written a book, it's really not easy. And I have a, um, a book coach and we've, we pivoted a few times, just like we have to do in the industry. So um, my goal is to provide information to, you know, to teach and help people learn, you know, the skills they need to be productive quickly in an office or in a setting that they've been hired into or that they want to be in. What are the, some of the key takeaways that um, your students that come to your CE tonight can expect? Oh, yes. Great question. <laughs> so, you know, what we're looking at, uh, what we're going to, the, the key takeaways, what, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at, you know, the, 
I, I say the five dots, right? The five dots of, um, of that influence experience. And so that includes perception. And you have to remember perception is reality, regardless if it's reality or not, whoever's looking at it, that reality is theirs. Uh, you know, what is the reality? You know, they might be perceiving one thing, but the reality that you're trying to present is something different. And an in-person presence, which most of us are pretty good at doing if you're in this industry, virtual presence, which is something that, you know, Nan spoke earlier from Cody, and I really loved what she said is that we always had to be perfect and we had to be, you know, I, I mean, I, I definitely miss wearing my, my fun shoes, but, you know, I, I can wear my Viking, I can wear my Viking sweatpants if I want. And the presence of just engaging people isn't about what you're wearing. It isn't about what the background is. It's about your message and your, you know, your, your feeling. And I think, um, and I know, I think, and I know that that has to be something that everybody has to get better at in this world. Um, and then your services, your services and your products, not just what, what they are, but how you're going to get that message across. How are you going to, you know, bring in more customers and more patients because of the fact it has changed. Matter of fact, I just heard this morning on, uh, I don't know which, I don't know if it was a specific, uh, uh, brand of car or whatever, but it was about you ordering your car directly online never going in and they're going to deliver it to your door. Now, if you're going to buy a $70,000 car online, I'm going to tell you what, they're going to buy glasses. So you have to see what's coming, right? So um, those are really the takeaways that I hope uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. It's going to be a little bit loose, but uh, it's really to get you the main thing. I always say one thing you I want you to take away. It's my aspiration and my hope that you will take away the motivation to change looking at just one thing one thing i'm not trying to answer all of the questions i can't be everything to everybody but you have to have the motivation to move something forward and make it new so well and i think motivation you know it's funny listening to you talk about how much you love the industry i hear a lot of myself and um i listen to you and i'm like god is it like this is what i come when i say this i wonder if people understand how important that is when you do something as a career i wonder like um you know how many people do this i, I don't really think you should be an optician if you don't absolutely love it because no. <laughs> it, it would be horrible it would be a horrible experience it's a lot right. of work and and believe me being somebody on the servicing side, and I've done many, I've serviced this industry in many different ways through, you know, whatever my role has been. It's always been as a support to opticians and optometrists, but that is not an easy role either. And and I, I and it doesn't matter what aspect of the industry I've been in, it's never been easy. So I'm just here to tell you, if you're ever wondering, yeah. there is not an easy corner to hide in this industry. If you're not no. loving hard, working hard loving taking care of people, loving the fact that it is the most thankless freaking thing that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you cannot love that anyway, then please do not do this. Put down your flyer and walk yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But you do love what you do. And I think if people can have one takeaway from tonight or even just from this session or from a lot of the other things we're going to do together, because I plan on working with you a lot because you're incredible. And I love the passion that you exude. And I feel like it's something people really need to be exposed to more. And you need to inspire more people to be that for others around us. That's the point of having an organic network is somebody might be like, wow, next time I talk to somebody, I want to really want to present myself that way. And now you're going to impact someone else, impact someone else. Instead of us all being cranky all the time, we'll be like bubbly and happy. And I think that's the one takeaway I would say people can expect is if they really listen and they really adopt what you do and they not just listen to what you say, but the way you say it, they can be inspired by your passion. And that's something we all desperately need right now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I hope that's what I hope that's what people will take away. Uh, I really, uh, you know, the, the passion of the industry. And once again, you know, being in the optical industry, there's so many facets. If you get bored, it's your own fault because there's, you know, fashion, there's technical, there's blood and guts, there's anything that you want is in our industry. And I will say 99 people, 99 um, persons out of a hundred people out of a hundred, if they got out of the industry, they got back in. It's solid. It's still here. Uh, you know, 
there's reasons why, uh, you know, people are getting out. I mean, we're in such a competitive uh, environment just for people to find jobs when they're, when they're paying 18, $19 at fast food restaurants. And, you know, that's just, that's some of that is just, what do we do about that? And so, you know, we have to have passionate people that are bringing other passionate people in. And, uh, you know, that is, that is, again, my goal. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that, uh, that leaks onto other people and it, it spreads my optical fairy dust around. <laughs> well, and talent is in demand. And it, it's interesting mm -hmm. when, um, when we, when we do a C, when you put a CE together, I would imagine that you, you, you think really about each individual person that's going to be taking that course. And, you know, what does this person need to get out of this? And how can I deliver this message in a way that they're going to not just listen to it, but apply it? Mm -hmm. um, because I know that you don't do anything without real intention behind it. So what are some of the steps that you've taken in designing this course to make mm -hmm. it something that people can not just listen to, but actually implement in their business or in their, in their career? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, you know, for me, really all of my courses, they all have kind of funky titles, you know, uh, they have, uh, there's a, there's a, an experience or a message behind every one of them that I have been through. And once again, that I, I believe is repeatable. I believe is teachable. It is, you know, the expectation is to, of course, grow a business and whatever facet that, you know, that course is in, uh, or whatever, whatever course it is, will bring that to you if you follow, you know, follow the, the process. You know, the connecting the eye care dots, that particular one was me one day sitting down and not realizing I had put, I had put eight dots on a piece of paper. And because I knew that after four years of being in this industry, I couldn't be an optician fitting glasses for the rest of my career. Because as you said, it's very demanding. And so I moved my way through. And, you know, as I did that, I just, I jotted down things, you know, for example, um, one of my courses is called Cartier Flu. And when I was 18, I uh, was in a very high end office, the, the frames that they were asking me to sell were Cartier's, and they were worth more than my car, probably double. And I remember them giving me the red velvet, you know, um, the red velvet, <laughs> uh, core necklace, whatever with the key on it. And they, every patient we saw, we had to open that case. I almost quit my job because I was literally physically sick. And then a situation came up where there was somebody that came in, there was judgment that happened. And the men in the industry that were in the office, cause it was very, you know, very male driven back then. Uh, that's funny to say back then sent me out to this patient to help her because they judged her and she bought $6,000 worth of product in 1984 and two Cartiers. Wow. So I called the Cartier flu because we don't want to judge. But so, you know, every, um, every course I have, I believe people will connect with because it's something they've seen, something they've seen or heard, or it will help them move past maybe a struggle like that particular story. If I would have quit my job, I would never have had that experience. And I would never have lost the, I lost judging people that moment in my life. And that was young and that was in sales. That was personal life. That was everything. So for me, I feel that that is something that we really need to share. Um, one other just quick one is called being Karen. And if you know, the name Karen has been really fun the last two years. Aww. In the press. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I wrote an article on that, a little blog post. And then I wrote a course. It's about judging people. You know, you can't judge. You can't judge a book by a cover old adage, but it truly is. So, you know, they, they are real live. I call it live feed. There's, there's learnings and there's fun and it is all about, you know, and I look at a couple end users, the the folks that are taking my courses and that are part of them, and then the people and the patients that they're helping, the end user. So, And how many CE credits can the participants who come this evening, how many CE credits will they get for this course? 
This is a one hour course. Yep. So the ABO courses are 50 minutes. Um, I usually, as you might be able to tell, I get along winded. So we'll be 60. If there's, ch you know, chats or, or um, you know, questions in the chats, I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. But, you know, 50 to 60 minutes. And that's a one hour, one hour uh, uh, CE for ABO. Now, for those of you who have, who have been with us throughout the day on Facebook or who maybe signed up but didn't get a chance to come to this morning's um, live taping of my vision show, each of our segments were recorded individually. So reach out to us and we will now be taking a little bit of a break until later this afternoon. We'll I'll be coming on with um, Grant Hanley. He'll be joining me. He's new to the Optical Near Me team talking a little bit about um, some of the changes and developments that we've had in the Optical Near Me ecosystem. And um, during that break, we'll have a lounge that's open. So if you're taking a lunch break and you want to come in and meet with Karen or any of the other um, people that connect that were presenting this morning, feel free to come on, say hello, and we look forward to seeing you this evening at the CE. Thanks, Charlene. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.